Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Saturday, July 20th, 2024. This recent computer glitch, which seemed to have affected probably half of the world's computers by a supposed glitch in the uh, data program, really should be a wake-up call about why people need to be prepared. Hospitals, healthcare facilities, banking, airlines, and so much more were affected. But what if something happened to our power system? Be it caused by um, environment, by weather, hurricanes, strong force winds, or a cyber attack. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole about uh, CrowdStrike, but they are the largest institutional investor um, with BlackRock and Vanguard. CrowdStrike is the same cyber company Hillary Clinton and the DNC hired to bury the WikiLeaks dump and to frame Trump uh, with that Russian propaganda. The glitch in the data was amateur. Many computers went into the what we call the blue screen of death and still don't want to turn back on and um, come back online. Of course, so some computer systems are saying it may be weeks before they're restored. But accidental or deliberate, we don't know. But think about extreme heat currently roasting the upper Midwest, and which is forecast to shift south and southeast during the week. Record temperatures will be in jeopardy in cities such as Atlanta, Nashville, Memphis, Little Rock, Arkansas, and St. Louis during the mid to late week. So why does it matter? Heat waves are an acute public health threat since heat ranks as a top weather-related killer in the U.S. on average every year. Recent data says half of those that die from heat-related deaths are homeless people. When you think of homeless people, maybe don't, people don't think about the families, um, mothers and fathers and children that are also homeless. For the past two weeks, extreme heat has broken records from the southwest to the plains and midwest, contributing to wildfires and severe thunderstorms that knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of people across the midwest. Many still have not recovered. Here's a map of what they're forecasting. I believe this goes into Monday. There in Texas, when they um, had that huge power outage, um, some charitable groups brought in um, generators because of the elderly. Think about the elderly. They um, either had their power turned off or the poor. Those numbers are rising because they can't afford the uh, increase in what power costs. Annually, about 1,220 people die from the heat. The way heat kills people is less obvious than other violent natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes combined. The difference between life and death can be decided by just a few degrees, experts say. Your body's resting temperature is supposed to be around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If it gets 7 degrees higher than that, the result can be catastrophic. High body temperatures is dangerous because it can start a cause of organ failures. When the inner body temperature gets too hot, the body redirects blood flow towards the skin to cool down. But that diverts blood and oxygen away from the stomach and intestines and can allow toxins normally confined to the gut to leak into circulation. That sets off a cascade of effects, clotting around the body and multiple organ failure and ultimately death. The bigger killer in heat is the strain on the heart, especially for those people who have cardiovascular disease. So when your body starts getting hot, the blood rushes to the skin to help shed core heat. And that causes blood pressure to drop. The heat responds by trying to pump more blood to keep you from passing out. So your body ends up doing the heart, doing a lot more work than it usually has to. The third main way is dehydration. 
As people sweat, they lose liquids to a point that can severely stress kidneys. Dehydration can progress into shock, causing organs to shut down from the lack of blood, oxygen, and nutrients. This leads into seizures and death. The best way to protect yourself from heat-related death is to cool your body down by any means possible. Emergency rooms often turn to cold water. They immerse the patient as quickly as possible to drop the body's temperature. Signs your health may be impacted by dangerous heat includes dizziness, being thirsty, profuse sweating, nausea, and general weakness. If you feel any of these symptoms of heat exhaustion, you should move to a cooler area and drink water. If action isn't taken, heat exhaustion can turn into a heat stroke. Signs of a heat stroke include confusion, dizziness, loss of consciousness. If you notice you stop sweating, well, you're probably heading into heat exhaustion. You may notice a throbbing headache, dizziness, and then passing out. If you think you might be experiencing heat exhaustion, the treatment consists of getting into a cool place, drinking lots of water, and possibly getting into a shower or a cool pool of water. If you have that throbbing headache, they're also recommending that you don't take ibuprofen until you've been urinating for a while. Because if you're dehydrated, ibuprofen can make the situation worse and lead to kidney failure. Drink water only. Do not drink alcohol or caffeinated beverages. Studies have found that extreme heat can lead to several types of heart disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, among other issues, including strokes and brain damage. Because it seems to be getting where we have more and more power outages for different related reasons across the country, this is why I push to have either a, uh, a solar battery backup or a generator. Even a smaller solar battery backup can run a fan for several hours, and having a fan while keeping hydrated could save your life. Hospitalizations and emergency rooms visit tend to increase during heat waves along with mental health issues, adverse pregnancy and birth outcomes, and increased health care costs. Older adults and other vulnerable people who are isolated or have poor mobility are also more likely to experience the health effects of extreme heat. Those without access to air conditioning can suffer the most when extreme heat is prolonged with little overnight relief. You know, I pray for the people there in Texas when there was, what, close to a million and a half people for days without power. I wonder how many actually died because of the heat. So I hope these tips help save someone's life. Um, another way to stay cool, if you do have power and a fan, um, I remember in the old days they would put a wet towel in, in the windows or in front of a fan. I don't know if that really worked or not. Maybe you guys can, can let me know. It sure made the, the room feel cooler. I don't know if it was because of the humidity that was increasing or what. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. If you have any other ideas. Yeah, please those. If you have any other ideas, please add those comments too. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.